welcome to another episode of The Art of Engineering. Today we're going to look at antenna analyzers and why you should own one. Now there are a huge variety of analyzers on the market but you're really going to be looking at two main types. The rig expert type of analyzer and of course there's the nano VNA. And you may be asking, what's the difference? Why should I choose one over the other? And hopefully by the end of this very short video, you'll have a little bit of an idea of which one might be best for you. Now, I'd just like to say, please excuse the ridiculous amounts of noise at the present moment in the shack. It is absolutely blowing a gale here in Sydney. Now, one of the big differences between the Rig Expert type analyzer for antennas and a Nano VNA will be the price. Now, your, your Rig Expert type of analyzer, there's a number of different types, and the price will normally go up uh, if you're looking at a greater amount of frequency range. If you want one that goes up into VHF, UHF territory, you're going to be paying more money for it. I'm going to be concentrating on um, HF at the moment. I don't uh, really dabble in the dark arts of the microwaves. So for the Rig Expert, you're looking at about, in Australian dollars, 450 odd dollars as a starting price. You know, if you wanted to convert that to freedom dollars, or US dollars, about 60% of that price. So you're looking at 260, 270, maybe 280 dollars US for a Rig Expert type analyzer, and then the prices will go up for frequency. Now, the Nano VNA, which is what I have, and I'll be showing you that shortly. A Nano VNA, uh, that type of analyzer, is gonna set you back about 70 Australian dollars. So, you know, 30, 30, maybe even less than 30 bucks US, you can pick one up. Now, if you wanna get one with a larger screen, it's gonna cost you a little bit more money. But the thing about the Nano VNA is it's not just an antenna analyzer. It has two ports on it, whereas your Rig Expert would only have the one for the antenna. Your Nano VNA has two. So not only will it allow you to analyze antennas, but when you get a little bit more confident with the settings and whatnot, and you might be heading down that uh, journey of being a home brewer, it will also let you do things like attenuation loss. So it's a really, really amazing piece of equipment. Now a vector network analyzer would have cost you thousands and thousands of dollars not so long ago, but these tiny little pieces of test equipment that are coming out of China, uh, maybe not as good as the, the, the real deal, but uh, more than adequate for a hobbyist. And I have the tiny spectrum analyzer as well. So for like a couple of hundred dollars, you can have a spectrum analyzer and a VNA. But we're talking about the Nano VNA today and its use as an antenna analyzer. So that's the first difference, the price. And of course, the second dif difference is the uh, VNA, the Nano VNA can do attenuation and a lot of other measurements as well. That, they're the, uh, the two differences. Now you might ask, uh, well, why wouldn't you just buy a Nano VNA? That there is a reason why you might not go down that path. And that main reason is probably ease of use, the learning curve that's involved. Because the Nano VNA, there's calibrations that you need to do on your own, and there's certain things you need to know about how to find things in menus and settings and all that good stuff. So if you're the sort of person that what's a, uh, a set and forget type of situation, a rig expert type analyzer is probably the go. But uh, if you're willing to take a risk-taking attitude to technology, you might want to give a Nano VNA a go. And I'm going to demonstrate the Nano VNA, and I'm just going to show you how easy it is to set up, to calibrate, and to see how an antenna is performing. And this is by no means the definitive guide of how to use a nano VNA, but it will give you an, a little bit of an entree into how to use it to analyze an antenna. So folks, without further ado, I'm going to set up a camera and my nano VNA. I'm gonna quickly take you through the calibration process just to show you how easy it really is. And we're gonna do a scan on my antenna that I've talked about in the past and that antenna we will sweep from three megahertz to 30 megahertz and we'll just be able to see where the resonant dips happen and you'll see what the screen looks like. So this folks is my Nano VNA and it's a small piece of test equipment and that might be another advantage over the Rig Expert, the fact that it is a lot smaller. Now you might say, why am I going to use 
a nano VNA or an antenna analyzer if I have an SWR meter? And that's a great question. And I think the main reason will be that your SWR meter, unless you actually take readings across a number of frequencies and plot them on a graph, you're really not gonna know what it's doing in the frequency domain, in a broad spectrum. So your SWR meter is a myopic um, focused in on one frequency, one SWR at a time, whereas your nano VNA is going to tell you real time what's happening across a band or across many, many bands and cracked zero up to 30 megs. In fact, this thing here, I think will take you up into the hundreds of megahertz into the VHF bands. So it is an amazing little thing for what it is and what you pay for it. Now, when you first get your nano VNA, there's this thing called calibration. And people get very, very worried when they hear that word because it sounds so technical and so difficult. But I'm gonna show you just how simple this really is. Now, you get three little screw-on calibration, I don't know what you call them, but they're the three little doohickeys <laughs> that you need to screw in to do your calibration. So you really need to make sure you don't lose these things, okay? Now, what you're going to do is you've got your little guitar pick here, and the guitar pick, when you tap it on the screen, opens up menus. First thing you're gonna do is you're going to, you're gonna say, I wanna do a calibration. So the one that says Cal, I'm gonna hit it. And before I do a calibration, so you're gonna you're gonna to want to set up a range of what they call stimulus. So that's what's um, coming out of this thing. So if you hit stimulus, you're gonna go start frequency, and you can do this in kilohertz or megahertz. I'm gonna start my um, frequency scan at uh, let's start it at one megahertz, and then I'm going to go stop at thirty three zero m. And because we've done a change of the stimulus, you need to do a calibration. And you'll be able to save this. So what you do is you push the screen again and you look for Cal. Now, if you can't see Cal, I'm gonna step back. You can see calibration there on the screen, C-A-L. Push it, we're gonna hit calibrate. And we're gonna, it says open, short, and load. And each one of these little duva hickeys that I was just talking about, is um, appropriate for each test. So in this instance, we're looking at the open and I'll try and show you uh, what the open looks like. That is the open doohickey and you can see inside there, there's no pin, it's just a hollow cavity. So we are going to screw that on to channel zero, not too tight. And we're just going to hit open. Now we're on short. And you can see now that um, we need to put the short on. So I'm going to take this one off and we're going to look for the one that's a short circuit. Now the one that's a short circuit is very obviously a short circuit because if you actually look at the, uh, the doovie hickey in this instance, you can see it has a pin inside it and it's sh the pin is actually shorted to the outer earth of the doovie hickey. So we screw the doovie hickey on and it's um, a, a dead short now. So we had an open, now we've got a short. You can see um, that when we had open, the little yellow marker was over to the right. Now it scoots over to the left and we are going to press short. And now it's asking us to put the load on. Now the load is 50 ohms and it is the uh, doohickey that's silver and gold and you can see that it is not a short circuit. You can see that white plastic between the center pin. So we have a basically a 50 ohm resistor there. So we're gonna screw that on. And watch what happens to the little yellow marker once we've got that screwed on. It's dead center now, which is where it's supposed to be on that line. And we go load. Now, um, once we've done that, all the other ones, isolation through, etc., etc., do not matter because we are not doing an attenuation and we're not using the second port. So that's all you need to do for an antenna analysis. So we're gonna hit done. It's going to say, where do you wanna save it? I'm gonna save that in zero. And that's our antenna calibration done. So now what we're gonna do is we're going to put away our duvahickey so we don't lose them. And you could 
calibrate this for several bands and also a big broad sweep like I just did. And it's probably a good idea to calibrate every now and then. I, I tend to do it every time I use the damn thing, but um, you certainly don't have to do it every time. It's only when you change the uh, stimulus for a given recall that you're gonna have to do that. So that's, that's the, the whole process. And there's so many videos online how to do this so much better than I just showed you. And then we're gonna screw in our adapter for the uh, BNC type connector that we're gonna be using. This is the antenna. I'm gonna try and get uh, one that's actually long enough. And at the moment, uh, we have um, a yellow trace and a green trace. Now the, the yellow trace is actually reactants. We only want the SWR plot because I'm just gonna confuse you with the other with the other trace. This has a Smith chart, it does amazing other things, but let's just go um, back and we're gonna go uh, display uh, and format. And we're just gonna go SWR. And we're also going to go trace and the yellow trace we're going to get rid of and trace 2 is the one we want and trace 2 is SWR you can see up here in the green and at the moment we have a 5.46 um, SWR being indicated because uh, we have not selected um, the antenna that we're on so I'm going to jump on, on my magic antenna box and I'm going to select the uh, port that we're on, which is number five and, and boom. We now have what's happening with our antenna. So let's go right down to one megahertz. So you've got this little thumb wheel at the top here that lets you scan across the, uh, the frequencies to show you what's happening at each point. So at one megahertz, we have a 2.75 SWR. Now I have a magic switch that will switch the un un out and turn my end fed into a quarter wave at 160 meters. So I'm gonna flip the magic switch and you can see things change. So this is supposed to be resonant at 1.8. At the moment we're on one meg. So if we scoot down to 1.8 we've got a 1.5 is to 1 SWR and uh, so that's uh, a reasonable SWR it's below 2 so that'll get me onto top band now I'm going to switch off the magic switch to take us back to being an N fed uh, half wave for 80 meters and we're going to switch we're going to um, scan across to 3.5 megs So that's at 3.6, and um, that is at one, 1 is to 1.32. So that's our resonance on the uh, 80 meter band. And if we scoot across to the uh, 40 meter band on seven megs, you can see here 7.3, we've got 1.42 is to one SWR. And you can see, you can scoot across and find where your resonant points are. There's another resonant point at um, 10.060, and we've got fairly flat SWR through to 14 megs. 14 megs is 1.65, and there's a little dip at uh, at uh, 18, etc., etc. So you can see there, and obviously, if you wanted to, you could create recalls for just a particular band. So I might do that for just one band. I will show you what this uh, antenna looks like from three to four megahertz. So here folks is the uh, three to four megahertz band on the NFED half wave. And as you can see, as we scan across, the SWR will change, it's getting lower. And when we get to exactly 3.5, which is about here, uh, you're looking at a 1.12 is to one SWR. So it tunes very nicely. And I've got it tuned to the lower end of the 80 meter band for the um, the mode that I prefer, which is <laughs> CW. And uh, as you can see here, as you scoot up to four megs, even when you get right up to four megs, 
it's still um, it's still resonant at you sort of want to keep your SWR below two normally so it doesn't get to two until you get to about 3.8 so it'll basically cover the whole of the 80 meter band and I don't need to tune it's nice to have a resonant antenna that works so that is your nano VNA as an antenna analyzer now speaking of size the nano VNA is also a wonderful thing to take on soda and poda now my QMX from QRP Labs has SWR protection on it, but if I was to take my QCX Mini, which, you know, this is my second attempt at building this, so I would not want to blow it up, and I would not want to have to get into it and change finals and whatnot. I can do it, but gee, it's a pain in the, in the behind. So I really need to make sure I plug this in to a resonant antenna. Now I do have an antenna tuner, a little one that I built. I'll link to that uh, video below. And it has a little bit of um, SWR type uh, measurement, but it's not really that reliable. It's, it gives me a rough guide of whether the antenna is tuned. But if I want to know what's really happening on the antenna and get it nicely tuned, I can use my Nano VNA. It's small and it's easy to take along and it's not hideously expensive as well. Now, when you take stuff in the field, you drop stuff, you break stuff, etc., etc. So if you take your rig expert with you, and you know you smash your four hundred and seventy dollar rig expert, you're going to really want to cry. Whereas this thing, I think at the time when I bought it, it was fifty dollars. I've had it now for a couple of years. It's still going strong. Uh, it's got rechargeable batteries in it that are still working, and it's just a really nice thing for for test. Not only testing antennas, but if you do start homebrewing and going down that path, you can check for attenuation. You can generate a signal. I've got a little antenna I plug into this, so if I want to test a, a receiver, um, see what's going on with that, I can set that up and 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 set a CW frequency in it, and it'll it'll generate a tone for me and all that good stuff. So, very very handy. Now, I know some of you folks will buy antennas and that's okay. Look, we all buy gear. We all have store-bought rigs and store-bought antennas, but it is really a huge pleasure to build your own antennas. And it's something that's very accessible for a beginner. So if you're scared off by wielding a soldering iron and building kits, all that good stuff, um, and I'm saying, please, at some point in time, give that a crack because it really does make the hobby a lot more enjoyable. But antenna is very accessible. Um, you buy yourself a squid pole and a bunch of wire, and once you've got that little analyzer, be it the uh, rig expert type or the nano VNA, you can have so much fun experimenting with antennas. And even your store-bought antenna at some point in time is gonna stop working, and you're gonna wanna know what's happening with it and whether the repairs that you affect actually mean the antenna is properly resonant nothing worse than destroying your rig we are living in a wonderful age where a lot of our equipment now has lots of swr protection on it it makes it very very difficult to destroy but uh hey i still manage to do it most of the time 73 and i will see you in the next episode of the art of engineering <laughs>